Hey, you got the Boston Trucker here. Hope you like my videos. Um, you know, it's no frills website. You know, low production. It's just raw me. Not trying to impress anybody. Just being myself. If you want to watch, great. If you don't want to, it's okay too. Um, so right now I'm on the computer at home, going over looking at some pictures on this great website. One of the probably the best trucking picture website. I've ever seen it's called Hank's truck pictures.com and I've got a whole uh, collection of my pictures on there from when I was a kid right up till up to the job I'm doing now so I'll go over some of the pictures uh, you know see if you find it interesting yeah, hang in there you know uh, I'm not sure if this will be a more than more than a part one series here I've never done more than a video, more than a couple minutes, so I don't know how long I can record for. I'll just keep it going until it stops, and uh, if it stops in the middle, we'll do part two and part three. So, anyways, um, you know, I'm a son of a trucker. There's a lot more to me than just truck driving, of course. I mean, I've got a great wife. Um, got two great little kids. Uh, we know we do a lot of vacationing. We do go in the city. We you know, hike and uh, go to nice restaurants and, you know, we've got a good life, you know, but, uh, I mean, my website's mostly about trucks and, you know, so anyway, so here's a picture right here of, uh, this is a company called Cape Cod Overland Express back in the early 70s and these were the first trucks I rode in as a kid. Um, my dad drove for this company probably 1970 to 1980, I'd guess, um, on the right to Brockway and the trucks on the left two are white 9000s. I rode mostly in the whites. Um, no passenger seat in those trucks. I'd sit on a milk crate. And uh, it was pretty fun though. It was an LTL company. They went out of business because of, because of deregulation. It was uh, one of the Max. So this is like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this, HankstruckPictures.com. Here's my name right there. You can look at my collection. There's thousands of guys on there that have trucking pictures. So right here is a picture of my dad on the left, my brother in the middle, and me on the right in the red at the uh, truck show in Boston, 1976, Commonwealth Pier. And that was my uh, first truck show. Right here is uh, me and my brother sitting in the cab of a Kenworth, me happy as can be. You know, that really says it all. That says my future right there. So scrolling down here a little, we have uh, so my first road trip. I went, went. My dad started driving over the road in 1980, and uh, my first trip with him, we went to Chicago, and here's me in front of some nice looking Kenworth and a GMC Astro at T5 Toledo, the TA truck stop in Toledo, Ohio. Me and my wannabe cowboy hat and sneakers. You know, that's a cool shot. I always love that picture. Here's my dad, same trip, in front of his GMC Astro, 1980, North Kingsville, Ohio. And here's a few years later, I was 15 years old, um, my dad was driving this GMC Astro. I remember this was down in New Brunswick, New Jersey. There's me climbing in. And another Kenworth my dad drove, uh... Down in Jersey City here. That was a pretty cool truck. I mean, it looks all old outside, but it was a. I mean, that truck was clean inside, and you know, it ran pretty good. Actually, here's a picture of the inside. Uh, right there. Hope you can see that. My job on the weekends, is I'd clean the truck, inside and out, make the bed, pack pack it for him, and pretty much I just sit there for hours, play truck driver. You know, talking on the CB radio, playing on the road again by Willie Nelson. Let's see, um, here's another truck my dad drove. Now this is the, uh, this is, so this is a white road boss, probably in 1985. I was 15 here, and this is the truck I learned to drive on. Um, you know, I could shift this truck pretty good. I had a 10-speed Road Ranger, and I'd ride with my dad in the summertime, and he dropped the trailer off at Plymouth Rock and Seekonk, and we'd bobtail back to Avon, Mass. And I was 15. I always let me bobtail back in the morning. 
and I could shift, you know, shift right through the gears. No problem, but I couldn't downshift. I always end up grinding them, and uh, I'd throw in a neutral <laughs> when I had to stop. And uh, so it took me a while to learn how to downshift in that truck. Now, here's a, this is a cool truck. This is a, probably a year before that. It was this auto car that he drove for Provident Leasing. And he ran the road in this truck. I mean, he slept slept across the, the bench seat, you know. We'd go to Ohio with it, or Indiana, wherever he had to go. And that's what you did back then. You know, not all the trucks had bunks. And, uh... This was his first truck that he really did anything to. I remember him painting the rims chrome color and painting the stack. And he put his own seat in it. And uh, he ran this truck for a while. This is a great truck. It had red leather inside. Uh, this was an awesome truck to me. This is like the best truck of my childhood right there. From when I was a kid. Alright. So then in 87, my dad bought his first truck. This is him on his first trip. This really, the video is supposed to be about me, really, but now I'm talking about my dad, which is cool. He'll probably get a kick out of this. So this is my dad, 1987. His first truck, 87 Western Star. Um, that was an also a cool truck. It had a 10-speed in it. I think it had a 4 and a quarter. You know, it didn't have a 4 and a quarter. I think it had a 350 cat. Um, it was leased a sea line out of West Warwick, Rhode Island. And he ran this truck, 48 states. No Jake brake, um, you know, low back seat, you know, no frills. Um, that was a cool truck. I got to drive it. Uh, I used to go with him over. We'd, I'd run with him for California in the summertime, and we'd run it together. He even let he'd even sleep sometimes when I was driving it, which is pretty stupid if you think about it. But he trusted me, so you know that was cool. There's another trip I went with him. I remember this was down at. Uh, Bick in Clearwater, Florida. We took this picture. And, uh, there's another picture of the Western Star. Probably a few years later. So he put some lights on the bumper, and, uh, my dad's handle was the Camel Rider. You can't really see it in this picture, but on every, starting with this truck, he had a painting of a camel painted on the side of it. Um, and then that picture went on every truck he owned after that. So, um, so here is his next truck. This is a 1990 Peterbilt. There's the camel right there. It's just camel rider with a palm tree. Um, I mean, that was dead truck to me. It was, you know, awesome. You know, that got me hooked on Peterbilts. Um, let's see. And then his next truck after that was this blue one here. There's the camel once again. That was a uh, 94 Pete. I think it had a 40, 475 cat. My dad always had cats. Here he was leased to Bud Meyer Truck Lines, um, a company that I brought him over to. I can get into that later. Might as well go through all my dad's stuff now, and then I can go back to my stuff. Um, go to page two here. I think I got some of my dad's pictures on here. Oh, yeah. Yep. So... Here's my mom in Lake City, Minnesota on a trip with my dad. She went on one of them like once a year. She'd go and take a week. That's about all she can handle. Um, let me see if there's any more of my dad's pictures on this page. Hold on. I got a lot of cool pictures on this website, I'll tell you. Um, okay, okay. So here's the uh, Red Western Star in the front of the house with a camel on the side. It's the house I grew up in. My parents still live there. Got a lot of pictures in front of the house with the trucks. There's another picture of the white road boss in front of the house. Let's see. All right, so I got a few more pictures of my dad's trucks, and then we'll jump over to mine. Maybe we'll make this part one, and then. Uh, Oh, I gotta find them, of course. So, yeah, I've been driving since uh, 1989. I got my license. Um, and it's been a great career. I don't, I don't regret it at all. Oh yeah, this is some cool pictures. Oh, okay, so, uh, this is my dad probably 19, I'm gonna say 1995. 
right along the Mississippi River with his 94 Pete and here's a picture of my brother in front of my dad's Astro and uh, here's me in front of my dad's Astro right there on the left and look at those old freight shakers those were the days you know we didn't know how cool freight liners I mean cab overs were back then and you know, right now I mean cab overs are coming back and everybody wants to cab over but uh, yeah, if I knew now, I know now what I knew then. You know, I'd be, I'd be a nice cab over right now. Let's see. Hold on. I just want to finish up my dad's pictures. I can't find them, of course. Um, sorry about this. Oh, those R and L pictures are sh not so great moment in my career. Well, anyways, I can't find him. Feeling this pressure holding this video camera. So, we'll go to my stuff. So, I got my license in 1989. First driving job I got was driving this truck right here. The Ford, single axle Ford. Um, this company was East Coast Truck and Trailer. It was a um, truck and trailer body repair shop. Um, and I would go out with this tractor and pick up trailers from companies who had body damage, and I would bring it back, and they would repair the trailers. And I'd pick up tractors. I would get a ride to different companies, or rider, or pick up any damaged tractors. So it was a really good job, you know, learning-wise. First For first job, I drove every kind of truck and every kind of transmission, and it was a good job, truck. It was a good job. So, now, 1990, I was just turning... I was like 19 years old. I drove for Land Transport. And this is my first sleeper truck. I ran this truck um, pretty much between Indiana and Boston. Did South Carolina a lot with it. Hauling mostly TJ Maxx stores. Now, I was only, like I said, 19, 20 years old. I wasn't even supposed to leave the state, but I just wanted to go trucking. They really did not care that I wasn't supposed to leave the state. They just. They just said, go, we got freight to haul, go for it, you want to do it? So I did that. I ran that truck for about a year. And I ran this Mac for a year. This was a great truck, the Mac MH, uh, MH Mac Ultraliner. Um, I mean, just an awesome truck. It doesn't look like much from the outside. Um, you know, I had it shined up. And uh, yeah, that, was, those, that was a great truck. And then I moved up into a conventional. And that was a big time super trucker when I got the conventional. And uh, this truck I ran pretty much TJ Maxx Warehouse in Worcester, Mass. I'd run out to Evansville, Indiana, TJ Maxx, drop and hook. Run out to their warehouse in Las Vegas, drop and hook. I'd either come right back to Boston or I'd go down to LA empty and load up freight for the warehouse in Worcester. And um, when I'd run Boston to Las Vegas and back, I did it in five days. It was 5,600 miles. I'd do it every week. It was. 19, 20 years old, a lot of energy. The truck would run. I didn't know anything about logbooks or recaps, and I was just uh, eager to truck, eager, young, and stupid. But um, you know, I I rode that truck for a while. It was a good truck. Here's another picture of it. Um, this is in uh, Twin Arrows, Arizona, just east of Flagstaff, off of 40. It's an old truck stop diner. They had the, these arrows in the ground. I I pulled up next to them, making it look like. Uh, like I was shot by the arrows, so that was kind of cool shot. So, 1992, they were talking about um, the CDL was coming out, and they had a they're gonna weed out the bad drivers, and uh, everybody's gotta run legal and work for legitimate companies. So, I left land and I went to work for this company right here, Bud Meyer Truck Lines, in Lake City, Minnesota. And the only reason I w they hired me is I was I. I was 22. I couldn't find many companies that would hire me under 23, but they they would hire drivers at 21 with a year's experience. So I was 22. I'd already been driving four years. Um, I got a ride out there by one of the drivers. Um, it's a driver named Ken Casper. Recently passed away. This great guy. Um, we rode out there. And um, so that was I think March '92. I started working at Bud Meyer, and so. The first truck I drove for them was 
This cab over P they built, 362P, they had the, the uh, three wipers across the front, and uh, that was an awesome truck. I mean, uh, I ran 48 states with that truck for probably nine months, and I, uh, here's a picture of the yard, some of their trucks in the yard here. I really didn't plan on going through all these pictures, but well, since I'm doing it, we're doing it. So there's some of the cool trucks we had, we had all kinds of trucks. Over there, some of the cab overs. <clears throat> so, um, so the next truck I drove was this 378 Pete. This I took this picture in uh, Reno, Sierra Sid truck stop in Reno, 1990, end of 1992, I'd say. I was probably on my way over towards San Francisco, Sacramento, or somewhere. Um, this was also an awesome truck. I just think I'll shined up. It's my first real big truck, I'd say. You know, truck ran. There's another picture of it uh, just south of Flagstaff on 17 on my way down to Phoenix. And, um, okay. Then uh, my truck had to go in the shop, so they got these brand new Macs. And I wasn't, I didn't want a Mac. I liked the Pete, but uh, the boss said, "Hey, why don't you take this Mac for a trip? Tell me what you think of it." So we've got these brand new Mac Elites. These are the first ones to come out. And I was hooked on this truck. I I asked to stay in it. And I mean the truck rode like a dream. It would, it was like riding on air. Shifted, you didn't feel any vibration in the steering. The interior was luxurious. Um I tinted the windows, I chromed the engine out, I polished the, the steps, um did a ton of stuff to this truck, and that truck looked awesome. And it was the best ma best looking truck in the fleet. Best looking Mac in the fleet anyways. My friend Mike Johnson would argue that point. He thinks his was the best looking Mac, and that's why I said that. There's another shot of it. This was, I remember this was in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania on Christmas morning, probably 1995, maybe. 1995, I think. So then, then I left... And I got the bright idea that I wanted to drive for Walmart. So when I got a job with Walmart, I was 25 years old, 1995. It's the youngest driver they ever hired. Jumped through a bunch of hoops to get that job. I was very proud of that job. I, were, I left Bud Meyer. Even though I loved Bud Meyer, um, I thought I was making a career move here. So I went to Walmart. Um, I only stayed at Walmart probably nine months. I was not happy there. It was an excellent job. But I was young. I still had the road bug in me. One day I got in trouble over there for... I won't even go into it right now. It's just really ridiculous. And I, I couldn't get over it. I was so mad that I even got in trouble for it. And Bud Meyer had called me multiple times to see if I wanted to come back to work. Um, making me all kinds of good offers. So... As in, that's at my parents' house and my dad's truck, and there's me. Uh, I stopped by one day when I had a, when I was on my break. And even that truck, I had it all. Yeah, it looked good, you know, whatever. So, finally, I went, I went back to Bud Meyer. Um, they gave me uh they offered me a brand new Pete. And here's the Pete I built. I drove it was a '96 Pete. It's pretty stock when I got it. I mean, this you know this truck didn't have that bumper and grill bars and chrome and tank covers and those Hogue built fenders weren't there. I mean, I probably put thousands of dollars into this truck, and I did truck shows with it. Uh, Louisville, you know, Matt's in Louisville, Vegas, Walcott, Wapan. Um, it's doing about ten truck shows a year on my time. Instead of going home, I'd, I'd go to a truck show, and I mean, it was my love, and I made some friends, you know, friends for life, you know, that are still good friends of mine today from doing the shows, and this truck got in a lot of magazines, I mean, compared to the trucks nowadays, you know, it, you wouldn't even look at this thing, but, um, you know, back then it looked good, I mean, the interior was, it had silver carpet, every button, every switch was chrome, I won a lot of trophies for interior, I got some second place trophies on the exterior, um, this is here, this is Wapon 1997, I believe. Um, well, I found those pictures of my dad's trucks. 
So this was my dad's last truck that he owned. It was a, um, I don't remember what year that truck was. That was his red Pete. He's got the camel on it. And unfortunately, it burned down on him in Hopkinsville, Kentucky at the pilot. His starter caught on fire. And there's a picture of it after the fire. And that was the last truck he owned. Uh, so he was leased to Icoff Enterprises and they wanted him to keep him. So they gave him this company truck, which was the same year as his truck. So he drove that until he retired, um, probably 2010. So, so let me see what else we got here. So those are my Bud Meyer pictures. Um, these are all of this. So after Bud Meyer, Bud Meyer went out of business in 2000. I drove for... Um, Go for Ken's Foods. Oh no no no! I'm oh, sorry. Let me go back. That was later. So this truck right here. This was owned by Gary and Lisa Ponds, and I knew them from doing truck shows. And when Gary heard the Bud Meyer was bought out by Covenant. He called me up and asked me if I wanted to come work for him, and he'd get me a truck, whatever I wanted. So I told him, Yeah, why not? So he got me a, a Pete from auction, and. uh Ran for Gary and Lisa for a year. You know, he run 4,500, 5,000 miles a week. He's running tile out of Texas, going to casinos in Vegas and the movie stars' houses in Beverly Hills. And uh, run produce back to Florida. And I was gone. I'd stay gone, you know, a few months at a time. You know, I was single, loving life. But I got burned out, and I wanted to let me slow down a little. So I went to work for this... Uh, Ken Salad dressing out of Marlboro, Mass. You know, and I was running between Boston and Chicago. This is 1999. Run down to Virginia. This is the first truck they gave me. This truck was a piece of garbage when I got it. I mean, I spent the whole day just cleaning it out. And then I added some chrome to the windows and uh, painted the rims. Had two stacks coming out of the back. But the next truck I got was a condo. I don't have any pictures of it. But that thing, I really, that thing stood out. I mean, that thing, I did the, did the dashboard and put chrome on the fenders, and it looked good. So, Ken's laid, us, laid off all their drivers, so I went, next I went to work for New Century Transportation um, in 2000. And, uh, no, that was another great job. So, I'm trying to find my first pictures from New Century here. So here's the first truck I drove a New Century. It's a Volvo 770. Had an automatic, which I didn't really care for too much. Um, I ran this truck for a year. The New Century um, ran 48 states in the very beginning for them. But then I ran, ran mostly uh, New England. So I run between New Jersey and Maine every day. You know, you, I mean, that was a great job. 57 cents a mile. Fifteen dollars a drop. I mean, I was making a hundred thousand a year working for them. Um, so then my next truck for them was this. Uh, <laughs> went from that to this napper sleeper, doing the same runs. This little tiny bunk. Dressed that truck up with chrome. I mean, I always dressing up, dressing them up with chrome out of my pocket. But that's how I am. I makes me feel better about my day when my truck's clean and polished. Drove that one for. Almost a year. Then I went back to a bigger bunk. Um, where is that? Oh, okay, go to the other page. Oh, man, this is exhausting. Are you still watching this? 23 minutes later? Here it is. So I went to this condo. It's the only new century truck that ever had chicken lights, people, by the way. Drove that for...